Hey, what is up guys? My name is Demos and welcome to another video. Today I will be showing you how to create this warp waves effect in Blender. So it's an amazing, in my opinion, effect. I really like it. Uh, and huge thanks to Velarco for helping me uh, figuring out the whole process. So as you can see, I have created this blend file over here. This is just the text I've made and this is a custom note which contains some other nodes. Um, it's basically to help us, so we'll start a new project. And I will show you how to make this effect. So, yeah. Let it load it. So we'll go to the composting. Um, of course we will take use nodes. Um, let's first of all mess up with uh, project settings. They don't really matter, but um, these are basically this this is important and this is the 60 frames per second it will work for any frame base it doesn't really matter so uh, first of all let me input an image so I will I guess I can just go to open something um, over my desktop maybe um, let's take this thing that takes the taste dairy <coughs> so we would render it out it will appear to be like that and um, if I input a color in alpha over we will just put a black background over that um, this is the layer, the layer behind so we will switch the color to black and as you can see we have um, this thing over here so um, you can create the effect on your own it's really easy but um, in order for us not to really get too complicated creating all this thing, I will just go ahead and append it. So I'll just go to the desktop. I have this um, warp waste file. So you can go to the, the you can open it, go to the node tree, and pick this one that says D warp waves two. Um, you can uh, download the blend file in the description. There will be a media file, possibly link. So we will add um, this uh, from group. I press Shift and A, or maybe add, maybe node. Sorry, add um, group. D warp waves too. Uh, it's not the red color. If you really want the red color, you can just go ahead and um, go here to the color thing and take a red or anything else and play with it. It doesn't really matter. It won't change anything in your project. It's just for organization purposes. <coughs> I'm sorry about my voice. So, um, as you can see, it already applied something, uh, but we will have to fix the settings up because those are quite bad. So, first of all, reset everything to zero except this one, which is actually the scaling. So, it says Z distance. So, our image um, basically looks like it's a 2D so we will work on the two axes the Y axis which goes over here and the X axis which uh, has a link over here but we have a third axis that is a 3D thing and it's actually the one that's pointing from us to there if you can see this arrow over here somehow like that uh, and this is actually the Z axis so this is the Z distance is actually like a scale node so one is the default so if you go 1.3 it will scale up and if you go like um, dot nine, um, it will go backwards. So one is a default value. Make sure to play with that. <coughs> and since we don't need a 3D panel over here, I will switch this to graph editor so we can um, fix our effect later. So first of all, um, let's take all of these um, settings. The first one is the strength. So if we actually do the strength thing, it will go like 600. Uh, it shows how much it displaces. However, the displace is not standard over here because uh, we have no displacement scale. So the reason I've left that, it's actually the scale of the displacement. So we, let's say if you put in one here, it will be the default scale. And it will be like that. Um, it's actually the scale of the wave um, that's going from bottom to top or top to bottom. It doesn't really matter in my opinion. Uh, I usually go dot one. Um, so it's like this, a really huge wave thing. But if your text is really big or what you want to focus on, 
then you can go for extreme dot point point zero five and it will be like a, a bigger wave um, that's actually those um, those two settings it's actually like frequency and amplitude somehow um, and then we go to the position it's actually how much this um, from where to where it moves so it's like a transform so if we press one it will just move to the top like the wave this um this thing went over here there you I, I believe you understand what I'm saying like uh, it moved the displacement from bottom to top a little bit if you wanted to move uh, from top to bottom then you have to go minus a value from minus so it will go down as you can see there a wave that's going somehow like that so, and the same goes from here so the wave is actually moving um, I hope you get what I'm saying and then the position is also by default it doesn't mess too much with it and this is at distance which is actually the scale so as I did before let's go for 1.3 um, it's basically it's basically here to cover up those transparent spaces so make sure it don't go really bad with the displacement because if we switch the position to 1.3 you see that there is a transparent space so you have to zoom enough but if you have a black background you're fine because it won't really be seen so like let's say if we move the alpha tunnel it will be like nothing ever happened uh, and that's it in fact but um, I will use the alpha tunnel and I will try to go over it as much as I can um, unfortunately I can do something like a translate because it's a displacement okay let's go back now um, have in mind that um, let's say that the position is counted into meters actually centimeters so uh, a value of 2.2 is actually one wave going on like right left and center so it's like it's moved um, one period of uh, 2 and um, B so if you want to make only one to the left one to the right and come back to the center you will have to use the position to 2.2 you see it's kinda going really back so if we go for a 2.5 2.2 point uh, 2.25 it will actually start moving to the left so like 2.5 the value close to it alright now I'm going to show you the settings I'm often using um, I'm um, let's say we want displacement of 50 frames so it goes 50 um, actually let's make it 60 because it's 60 frames per second so let's say I want to move one to the left, one to the right and go back it doesn't really matter how much it does, you can do this thing actually many times but be careful with the position because if you like let's say in 60 keyframes create a position of um, 10,000 it's going to move like crazy to the left and the right so you have to be kinda careful with the position but not um, but do not use too low values so um, uh, my settings for starters it's zero strength the displacement is like that except if you want to switch it in the middle of a case and of course the set distance goes for the default values now we will go to the end of the frame and switch the position to 2.250 and keyframe that and also keyframe the Z distance and the strength so the only thing that changes is the position so right now what we did um, actually it's that strength doesn't really affect anything and the distance doesn't really switch because we actually want it when the effect ends to come back to the to the same thing so as you can see the displacement actually moves but because the strength is not activated it doesn't displace anything in the image so close to the effect before it actually ends we will set a scale so we will go strength to 600 keyframe that um, 
Actually, because the transparent spaces might be too much, let's take a value of 450. 450, sorry. Like that. And replace keyframe. Right click and replace keyframe. Uh, the position shall stay the same, doesn't really matter to us. And the Z distance shall go to 1.3 just to cover the transparent spaces. If not completely enough. So, what is going on from. Uh, this is frame 51. So, from frame 1 to 51, you will have um, a displacement that starts slowly and then gets stronger and stronger and stronger. The position will move normally. And the Z distance, and you will see the image zooming in. That's all that we've done there. And then, like, into. 9 frames, kinda instantly, the string is gonna fall, so we'll do the zoom, but the wave will continue, and our image will go back to normal. So if we go into a random keyframe, like let's say frame 31, you can see that there is a displacement, which is um, far lower than if we go to 51. like that. Uh, so the position is going to work normally um, and make sure that it doesn't really get overwhelmed with it. Of course you can mess up with the settings, that's just my setup. Um, I hope you understand it well. Um, if you didn't really did, just um, please ask for explanations into the um, description file. So um, let I will show you how to make a test render about this or pre-render. Um, you'll just select PNG, or basically, since we don't really care about the result, we're just going to see how it applies. Um, I will go to my TMP folder and name it um, Warp Wave, and press Accept. Um, I can save the file anyways. Um, Let's save it. Um, save as um, warp waves. Dot blend. I will save it as a Blender file. Um, okay, you can save it like that. Never mind. You can save it however you want. You have this encoding. Um, if you want, you can consider MPEG3. Um, of course, select only the keyframes that you are going to apply the dear warp wave just to see how the thing is going to work. Um, and you don't need to text loose less output. Um, you have selected your folder and you are going to render it by pressing Ctrl and F12. Um, the final result is shown in the beginning of the video. I guess I will show it into the end. Uh, thanks again to Volarco for helping me figuring out the sync. I hope it's really helpful. You can download the blend file in the description. I hope the tutorial was enough. Um, if it helped you, please consider leaving a like. Um, for any questions, make sure to answer to question in the comments. And I will see you to my next tutorial. Thanks for watching and bye.